So Ilhan Omar was viciously smeared by Republican Dan Crenshaw and then also later on by the President of the United States, Donald Trump. Um, and she was smeared over some comments that she made at CARE. And CARE is the Center or the Council on American and Islamic Relations. Um, and this is one of those groups where there's just endless xenophobia and bigotry and fear-mongering from the far right, where they try to pretend like this is a Muslim Brotherhood front group or something, when it's, it's just simply not. Like, the whole point of CARE is... A bunch of Muslims get together and they try to make it so that the United States of America does not fear them. <laughs> like, that's the whole point is like the And I know some people who are in the organization and they're they're wonderful people. Like the idea that they're, you know, stealth jihadists or something fighting to implement Sharia law. No, it's a group of Muslims that saying, hey, we're really not that bad. You, you guys mind accepting us? And I'm not kidding about that. That's what the group is for. So Ilhan Omar gave some comments speaking at a CARE event. Um, you're about to see the full comments, but they took what she said here out of uh, context and ran with an insane attack against her. Take a look. It doesn't matter how good you are if you one day find yourself in a school where other religions are talked about, but when Islam is mentioned, we are only talking about terrorists. And if you say something, you are sent to the principal's office. So to me, I say raise hell. Make people uncomfortable. Because here's the truth. Here's the truth. Far too long, we have lived with the discomfort of being a second-class citizen. And frankly, I'm tired of it. And every single Muslim in this country should be tired of it. <laughs> CARE was founded after 9-11 because they recognized that some people did something and that all of us were starting to lose access to our civil liberties. So you can't just say that today someone is looking at me strange, that I am going to try to make myself look pleasant. You have to say this person is looking at me strange. I am not comfortable with it. I am going to go talk to them and ask them why. Because that is a right you have. Okay, so... Do you get the gist of what she's saying there? It's very straightforward. She's saying 9-11 happened and then Muslims were looked upon in the United States as, you know, incredibly sketchy. And people started giving you side eyes and people started being scared when they saw Muslims. And it was viewed as, well, obviously you're either a terrorist or you're a terrorist sympathizer. And that's what led to a giant... Uh, backlash and there was a, an increase in hate crimes and it it was an increase in hate crimes not just against Muslims but also against Sikhs basically people people with brown skin you know that's why it's always such a uh, a weird non sequitur point when people say like oh Islam is a religion so you can't be like what you can't be racist against a religion no the point that people are making is when they talk about anti-Muslim bigotry is that in in the eyes of, you know, your average American, when they think of Muslims, they think of, you know, uh, people of Middle Eastern descent, Arab, or just really brown people. Like, that that's what they think of. Now, that that's actually not true that that's the biggest contingent of Muslims. In fact, I think, what is it, Indonesia that has the most? I think it's Indonesia, but don't quote me on that. I could be wrong. But that's not what people in the U.S. think when they think of Muslims, oftentimes just people of Middle Eastern descent. So the point that she's making is after 9-11 happened, our, uh, the, the Muslim, uh, civil liberties of Muslims kind of got stepped on 
You don't believe me? Go look at the terrorist watch list where they started loading up Muslims on the terrorist watch list. By the way, there's no due process whatsoever to get on that list. You can't get your name off once your name is on it. And they would just go, I don't know, good enough. You know, guilty enough. So, but furthermore, people would look at Muslims and just be scared and just think, well, they're either terrorists or terrorist sympathizers. And the point she's making is, is a similar point to what if there was a, a string of, let's say, three or four uh, abortion clinic bombings? Um, some people did something there, and then what? Should all Christians be looked at with a side eye? Should there be this default setting of bigotry against Christians in that situation? Because that's not okay. So that's the point she's making. Now, for those of you who don't know the specifics of this scandal yet, I will ask you, many of you probably already know the specifics of the scandal. But for those of you who don't, what do you think they isolated out of that clip to make their incredibly shitty, hacky smear attempt? You know what they isolated? They isolated when she said, on 9-11, some people did something. So they clipped out just that. Ilhan Omar saying, on 9-11, some people did something. I think it was Dan Crenshaw who originally did it, Republican congressman. Um, and they were pretending that she was being dismissive and undermining what happened on 9-11. So, in, in a supreme twist of irony, Ilhan Omar was making a speech about how, because of 9-11, you have, you know, the default setting for many Americans is to look at Muslim Americans and be scared and give them the side eye, and think either they're terrorists or terrorist sympathizers. That was the whole point of the speech. And then Dan Crenshaw and Donald Trump go on to prove her point. Dan Crenshaw isolating that little part of the clip and acting like, ah, oh, I guess you don't think 9-11's a big idea. You're seriously going to make that argument? That's what you took away from that clip? That Ilhan Omar is somehow sympathetic to the 9-11 terrorists? But that's exactly the point Ilhan Omar was warning against. Stop looking at us like second-class citizens and just assuming that, like, the grossest, worst elements of, of Islam reflect average Muslims in the United States of America. And then Donald Trump takes that little clip, isolates the part where she says 9-11, some people did something, clips that out, and then shows video of the towers falling on 9-11. And tweets like, we will never forget. So again, implying that Ilhan Omar is somehow sympathetic to what happened on 9-11, or dismissive about what happened on 9-11, when that is obviously in context, not at all the point that she was making. And again, you went on to prove her point. Her point was, we're not second-class citizens. You don't have to be scared of all of us. You know, we're regular people, but now we're looked at, and people go, they're probably terrorists or terrorist sympathizers, and that's, we don't like that. And then they go on to prove exactly what she was saying. And Donald Trump, by the way, is a guy who went on TV the day the towers came down. The dust was still in the fucking air. Everybody was still scared to death. And what does he say? Well, I used to have the second tallest building in New York City. Now I have the tallest building in New York City. And you're going to accuse Ilhan Omar of diminishing 9-11? There was one time when Donald Trump referred to 9-11 as 7-11. Now, listen. Am I going to, you know, harp away on this and focus on this and, and act like now I, I don't think Donald Trump, you know, or act like now Trump is fine with all those people dying? on 9-11 because he had a slip of the tongue and he said 7-11 as opposed to 9-11? No. But I'm not going to do that because I'm not a fucking hacky bitch. I'm not a smear merchant. You know who is a smear merchant? Dan Crenshaw. You know who is a smear merchant? Donald Trump. You know who are smear merchants? Every single fucking right-wing outlet that ran with these dishonest attacks. And that was a direct result of this dishonest attack. There's been a giant spike in death threats. Why? Because you're implying one of the first... Female Muslim congresswomen is sympathetic to 9-11, and now you're going to have people go, well, fuck that. And so they call her, and they threaten her, and her life is in danger. By the way, before they even ran with this grotesque smear, somebody was just arrested 
for a credible threat against Ilhan Omar's life. And the president of the United States of America has put her in further danger because he's implying a sitting congresswoman is sympathetic to 9-11 terrorists. Well, I have one fact that utterly destroys your shitty, grotesque smear attempt. Ilhan Omar has co-sponsored the 9-11 Victims' Compensation Fund. Many of the Republicans who are currently attacking her and acting as if she's sympathetic to 9-11 terrorists, many of those Republicans have not co-sponsored the 9-11 Victims' Compensation Fund. So she's there for these people in their time of need. She's there for the victims of 9-11. She wants to give all of them health care. And these people who are politicizing this issue and acting like she's sympathetic to 9-11 terrorists, they're not there for the people who are still victims of what happened on that day. These are not good faith critiques. On purpose, they are taking things out of context to drive home a narrative. And that narrative is insanely dangerous. At a time when we just had the, the Christchurch shooting in New Zealand, where I don't even know the final number, but dozens of innocent Muslims were killed by a white nationalist, you're going to do a smear campaign in the U.S. where you're implying that one of the first female Muslim congresswomen is sympathetic to 9-11 by taking her, context, uh, her, her, her words out of context, her comments out of context, it does not get any worse than that. It really doesn't. And congratulations to all the idiots on the Democratic side who fed into the smear campaign like Ilhan Omar is somehow anti-Semitic because she criticized the Israel lobby. So many times, Democrats love using mick diversity when they run elections. Us? <laughs> We're the party of black women and minorities. Yes! We're all about it, baby. We're all about it. Oh, shit. Are, are the Republic Republicans launching a smear attempt where they're trying to say she's sympathetic to 9-11? New phone, who dis? Am I supposed to help defend her? <laughs> Nancy Pelosi, her first comment on this was, Oh, Donald Trump shouldn't uh, invoke the memory of 9-11 to score a cheap political point. That's all you got? That's all you got? And then finally, fucking two days later, she said, well, maybe you should delete the tweet. They're putting her life in danger, and they're grossly taking her out of context. And anybody who's willing to be honest knows it. And I'll say it one more time because it's true. It is supremely ironic that she gave a speech saying, hey, it's not cool that we're looked at as terrorists or terrorist sympathizers simply because there were a bunch of assholes who did 9-11 and terrorists who did 9-11. That was her point. And then you go on to prove it by pretending like she is sympathetic to 9-11 terrorists, or she's dismissive of what happened on 9-11. No, Don, you know what I would say? I would argue that the person who's giving Saudi Arabia over $100 billion in a weapons deal, knowing damn well that they're using those weapons to fund Al-Qaeda in Yemen, and they're using those weapons to fund jihadists in Syria, I would argue that that guy is dismissive of what happened on 9-11. That's what I would argue. I would argue that continuing to arm these jihadist terrorists who committed these atrocities. I would argue that that would be the person who is sympathetic to the 9-11 terrorists. At least in their actions. Not necessarily, you know, psychologically. I think they just look at it as, eh, it's business as usual. I think that's how Donald Trump looks at it when he arms Saudi Arabia to the teeth. I think that's how he looks at it. But ultimately, yeah, you are helping those people who commit those atrocities. So maybe, just maybe as you're propping up and arming one of the worst governments in the world who were responsible for funding the 9-11 terrorists. Maybe, if you're in that situation, you should hop on a short bus to shut the fuck up, Sville, if you're going to criticize Ilhan Omar. When Ilhan Omar said nothing wrong and did nothing wrong. And for all those fucking right-wingers out there who say they, oh, us? 
We hate outrage culture, bro. We don't like outrage culture. And we don't like it when people like take things out of context to try to make a cheap political point, bro. We don't like that. Until you do. And then you do it relentlessly and you put somebody's life in danger, literally, in the process of doing it, even though you know it's a smear attempt. So, you can all go fuck yourselves. You're a bunch of jackasses, and you're dead wrong. And in your heart of hearts, I think you all know it. 